Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. We're going to continue talking about simple things that you can do to improve your English. But just before we do those simple things that you can do to improve your English, I want to tell you that tomorrow in the UK is Guy Fawkes Night. Guy Fawkes Night is the night when we set off fireworks. So tomorrow evening, I will walk around with my microphone and I will try to do some live outside commentary for you. Guy Fawkes Night uh, is a night where the whole sky is lit up with beautiful fireworks. But um, there's a few little problems with that. One problem is the pets who don't like the the big bang that goes with fireworks. And there's also other issues of safety, because we usually light fires uh, around Guy Fawkes Night as well. But I'll tell you more about that uh, tomorrow when I make the broadcast. Uh, so that won't be tomorrow morning's broadcast, that'll be Saturday evening's broadcast, so you'll probably get that on Sunday morning. But right now, uh, I want to talk to you about some simple things that you can do to improve your English very, very quickly. Now, yesterday we spoke about confidence. If you say something proudly, loudly, and fast, people will not hear any mistakes you make in a sentence. But if you go into a crowded room or a presentation, and you stop, uh, 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 excuse me, people will remember you as the person who really doesn't have good English and is afraid to speak. So it's hard, I know, to raise your voice and just boom out what you want to say. But uh, it's very important that you work towards that. For those of you who speak to me regularly, you'll know that intonation pitch and tone, linking and blending words together, and breathing are a few things that I like to focus on to empower you to speak better. Today I want to talk to you about the letter R, which comes at the end of words. Now I've just used it twice there, better and words. You'll notice that the letter R has almost vanished. And that's the way it is in and around the London area and also around certain other parts of the UK. It's considered very eloquent and polite and is part of received pronunciation to kind of soften some of those letters which are very, very hard letters. So, for example, if you're in Scotland, uh, you hear the letter R a lot. Um, if you think of um, words like a rabbit, I'm going to eat a rabbit, a rabbit. Mm -hmm. Words, better. You see, the R is very pushed, but in polite English, especially in received pronunciation and in the London area, the R is softened because a hard R was in the past considered to be a sign of a lack of education. A lack of education. So they, they softened it to make themselves very different. And that became uh, almost silent in words going forward. Let me just show you that. Words words. You can hear there that the letter R is almost gone. Words. I'm going to get better, better. And in both these cases, the R is gone completely. Words. Better. And there's many more examples of that. The R generally throughout words is never really stressed. Okay, so let, let's just think of um, 
let's just think of some words here with the letter R. So, relieved. Now, you can hear the R there, but it's not R, a relieved. It's relieved. Relieved. Okay. Um, which, of course, uh, means to um, have assistance with something or to be relieved of duties when you're fired. Uh, it has a few different meanings. Um, once you take <coughs> a paracetamol or ibuprofen, you might feel relieved of a headache. It means that it gets better. To relieve is a verb. Relief uh, is the noun, to feel relief. So uh, let's just talk a little bit more about other words. There's relive, when you go and live somewhere else. Relive. So relieve and relive. And again, the R is very soft there. You can, you can hear it. There's plenty of other examples. Um, if I think of the name Robert, Robert, you can hear the letter R is very soft in the beginning and has disappeared in the seconds. Robert, or my wife's name is Roberta. Roberta, um, you can see it's again vanished. So the letter R needs a kind of a special treatment and uh, the best way to capture this is by shadowing. I'm always telling people, shadow, 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 listen to the radio, repeat, listen and repeat. I've spoken about this a hundred times. So that's really important, okay? Shadowing. Uh, because that's when you listen to a native speaker and you imitate exactly what you hear. And if you're looking for a list of sounds in English, including this letter R, go over to the anti-moon site. If you put into Google anti-moon English sounds or anti-moon phonetic alphabet, it'll give you a list of all the sounds of English with recordings. And you don't need to learn the phonetic alphabet to, to capture those. So you can have a little look at those. Very good, very good. So that's the letter R. So that's all I really wanted to say today. So remember, remember, the letter R is often diminished if it appears halfway through a word or at the end of a word. And at the beginning, it's very soft. Unless, of course, you're aiming to have a northern accent. Northern. He's almost gone there as well. Okay, so I hope to see you all soon. And... Uh, I'll let you know about those fireworks. So tomorrow evening I'll be going out. So Sunday morning um, I'll do some recordings and you will also be hearing a history of Guy Folk's night, what it is and how we got here with that. Thanks, guys. See you. Bye.